Hello everyone, my name is Kim Po. I'm the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library, and today I am here with Colin from the Scranton Library, who's going to tell us about a podcast that he started or was a part of the team that started in Scranton, um, I believe during COVID, when we had, we were like, how do we reach, how do we reach our people? So Colin, mm -hmm. how did you reach your people? Give me the gist. <laughs> well, so this is an idea I'd had for a while, you know, I feel like uh, social media is such a powerful way for organizations to interact with people. And, you know, it, it's more than just Instagram and Facebook. I thought, like, what's a way that we can reach our patrons and build community connections when we can't leave our houses? And I just had the idea of, why don't we do a podcast? And I think it was the very first meeting I had after I was hired here <laughs> at the Scranton Library uh, that I just brought it up. It's like, hey, like, we should do a podcast. And our amazing director said, that is a great idea, Colin. You and our new children's library in Mila get on that. So we got on it. And like, you know, we looked at what other libraries were doing with podcasts. And we saw that every library that has a podcast has a podcast about books, which is great and wonderful. Books are amazing, but we're more than just about books. The whole purpose of the library is to start conversations in the community because that's the best way to build knowledge creation, you know, Library 101, we all took that philosophy class when we were in grad school. Um, so we thought, well, what if we just had people in the community talking about the stuff that they're interested in? You know, so we said, okay, we'll do that. So we uh, just created, we uh, bought a bunch of equipment. Uh, I think it was about like $500 worth of equipment because we wanted to have a very professional setup for when we had outside people come in. And we just started talking. So I think the very first podcast is, is uh, which you can listen to on our website, by the way. They're all still up there. We have two seasons out right now. Um, we're, we had to take a break because now that we're letting people into the library, everyone got a lot busier. So we're trying to figure out how we can continue the podcast at this moment. But we have two seasons. And the very first episode is just us introducing ourselves. Uh, if you want to listen to it, scrantonlibrary.org. Uh, I wish I could put that like on the screen, but I, I'm sure we can figure that out. Maybe we can link it in the description down below. Awesome. Um, and so the first episode is just us introducing ourselves. And then I talk about, uh, we have something, a podcast where I talk about the history of Star Wars uh, for about an hour, for about like however long. Um, and then my co-host did a, lifestyle thing where she talked about the five habits to change her life that was very popular and then we just had our co-workers come in and just talk about the stuff they're interested in so we have one about raising backyard chickens our director has a, a pod, a episode where she talks about rock climbing we have someone talking about uh his video game collection and then um and that's pretty much the first season is uh library staff talking about their interests and then the second season we were finally able to get uh, some local people to come in. So we got our first select woman and the previous first selectman, because um, we want to make sure we had a Republican and Democrat talking because in these times we cannot play favorites. Um, so uh, our current first select woman, or at least I haven't checked the election results. I think she's still our current first select woman. Um, she talked about her world travels. The uh, previous first select person, uh, he talked about his time in the Navy. And then we got a local celebrity who's actually a national celebrity. We had Jacques Pepin on our podcast. Yes, that we were so excited about that. We, we got an interview with him because he lives in our town and it was amazing. Uh, we, he did a book signing for all the staff beforehand and he just talked about it and the because the whole point of the podcast is to get these people into the library talking about the things that they love and then some of the people in the community know hey i didn't know this person was interested in that and i can talk with them about that and just because everyone has at least something that they can just nerd out about right like we all have it and that's the point of this is just to get people to realize oh there are other people who share this interest or i've never heard about that this person's more interesting than i thought and hopefully when they run into each other at Stop and Shop or whatever they're shopping, they can have a conversation about it. And, and that was the ultimate point of the podcast. We had, we got listeners from all over the world, uh, surprising following in Belgium. 
which is completely random. And we even got um, we got some guys. We got, got a guy from the community who had experience uh, editing uh, uh, music and sound to help us with the, some of our later episodes. So as you listen to it, you can hear each episode. The quality gets a little bit better and better, and then finally, it's just absolutely outstanding. So, uh, and that's sort of the tale of the podcast. You know, right now we're just sort of super busy. I have team programs. My co-host. Um, has children's programs and she has some major life changes coming up too so like she's dealing with all that so we're just sort of like trying to figure out how we can continue this right now because it was very popular and we want to just keep on doing it we spent a lot of money on the equipment <laughs> so. that's yeah. awesome i yeah. it, i i love a good podcast i was listening to a podcast before we jumped in here to talk about your podcast so i'm i'm already a fan of the of that form of media as i as yeah. i seems like many librarians are. I don't know if that's a prerequisite or something. But so can you tell us a little bit, so you said you spent about $500 on the equipment. Mm -hmm. What did you buy? Like what, what is needed for a podcast? You know, you know what? I think actually I have it in this room. Um, with me. I didn't even think about that, but let me uh, grab my key and then I will bring it out for you. Here we go. So we bought... Uh, these extending arms for our, our direct, we got directional mics. So these extending arms that we can use to adjust them. We got these awesome Shure mics that uh, right here. And we decided to go with directional mics because whenever you watch those professional podcasts where they have the video, they always have the mics right in their faces. And so we decided, yes. So we decided to go with uh, those kinds of mics. Um, if you are on a budget, you can just get a, a, a omnidirectional mic, so that way you don't have to worry about it. But we had the money; we weren't spending it on programming at the time, so we figured we could splurge a little bit. Um, and then the uh, most important thing, though. Oh gosh, taking all this stuff out of the box. The most important thing was our soundboard because. Uh, we got the Zoom brand soundboard. It is the, let's see, it is the Live Track L8. And this thing is what really allowed us to have very professional sounding podcasts. Um, it allows you to direct, to adjust uh, the mic settings for each individual person. So that way, if someone has a higher pitched voice, you can adjust it for them, lower pitch, you can adjust it for them. So that way you get the crispest possible sound. Um, and uh, it's just very helpful, though I would recommend if you're going to go this route, you have a producer of some kind who can sit behind it and make the adjustments because it's hard to adjust while you're talking. As a, yes. uh, as a as an ex-theater major who once was put in charge of running one of those and did a mediocre to poor job. I I completely yes. understand. And of course, we have uh, headphones that each person wears, so that way they can actually hear how their voice sounds, which is right, and they can actually hear everyone. Their voice actually sounds like a lot better. So th that's it came up to like I think. And I'm going off of memory here because I wanted to come into you guys just so we could have as natural a conversation as possible. But going off of memory. It was between five hundred and a thousand dollars. We got it all from this great uh, retail store in New York that gave us a an institutional discount. So, yeah, oh, lovely. Yeah. And we might have to um, touch base with you and, and get some links to, to that kind of I stuff. Will, but I mean, this yes, also sounds absolutely. like it fits right in with like a, a what you guys are are doing. Seems like it fits perfectly within like a Connecticut Humanities grant. So you know, even if someone a library mm -hmm. doesn't have the funds within their, you know, own budgetary expenses, like there, there are probably opportunities and avenues um, for something. Absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. The, the biggest challenge for us during the pandemic, uh, I think it would be a lot less of a challenge now, was the advertising angle, because um, we, the libraries as, have done an amazing job of letting people know that we have books but they don't really come to us expecting anything else. So, and when they come into the library, it's easy to get a conversation going, but during the pandemic, we weren't able to do that. So we, uh, we've noticed that since the pandemic ended, uh, when we mentioned it to people, they actually listened to it. So that's been 
really good. But like that is the biggest thing for anything like this is just letting people know about it and getting the word out. And I think the, like I said, the pandemic was a big obstacle for that because we're so used to in-house advertising. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. I think we, we've all learned a lot, I think, over the last year and a half. But I'm, I'm also interested. Okay, so you gave us a little bit about the platform. Now, I remember being in school. I went to library school mostly mm-hmm. online because, you know, everything that was kind of happening at the time. And we used like Audacity for uploading mm-hmm. things. What platform do you guys use? Because you have to record somewhere, right? Right. So we use GarageBand. Awesome. Okay. okay. Um, so we, my co-host had a MacBook that we used. Um, we've since purchased one for the library. So we, when we restart it, we won't have to use someone's personal computer anymore. But, um, and then we just uh, would post it to uh, Spotify and SoundCloud. Awesome, such as Spotify. Yes. and we, 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 you know, we were brand new to this. Like neither of us had ever done anything like this before. I, so we, um, when we restarted, we're hoping to also put it on Apple Podcasts app. Yes, we can share with the iPhone users. Yes, exactly. Um, so I, and then you, you'd mentioned a little before, this is probably the last thing I'm, I'm interested, this, this is also mm-hmm. great. I've always secretly wanted my own podcast, but I have no idea what to talk about because yeah. like when it's about books, I'm like, well, now I have to read and now I've seen your and right. I won't do anything but rewatch old episodes of Law and Order. But, um, so you mentioned ha- being able to kind of see or having some way to identify the demographics that are reached. How, mm-hmm. how which is in like Belgium. What does that look like for you guys? Like, what are who who are you reaching with this with this information? Well, um, so every platform has its own analytics methods. Oh. Uh, so when you uh, SoundCloud actually is a really good and easy to use analytic system, and that's how we kind of that's where most of our listeners were going. We found uh, so when you look at it, it shows you here are the people who listen to the most. Like, here's where they're from. And like most of them were from the United States. And then just every episode, there was a listener in Belgium. So I don't know if someone was using a VPN. Yeah. Or, and they just oh. did those Belgian TV shows. Or if there was someone from Madison who lived in Belgium. But right. um, that was something that would pop up. So, <laughs> All it, right. Is, yeah, it was really, it was just really cool. And like, that is the biggest thing I think like is just, uh, the, when you figure out where you're getting people from, we were thinking we might have done a Belgian themed episode, but then uh, the library reopened and it was just, uh, we, we just didn't have time to do it anymore. So That's we're hoping fair. to, like the, the biggest thing is, if, especially if you're a librarian doing this, is figuring out the right schedule. So when we were doing it before, we were doing it on a bi-weekly basis. So every other week we would have an interview and that just, uh, doesn't work anymore so we're hoping to maybe change it up to maybe an interview once a month or just whenever we can um it's a lot harder when you're in an understaffed library with uh and you're running basically i'm running the the whole team department by myself uh as teen librarians all too often have to do uh in in myla is the primary children's uh programming children's librarian uh so like she has all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's hard to find the time. But the thing is, it's not the amount of content. It's how consistent you are with it. You know, sure. so. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think all podcast listeners can, can fully respect um, and understand that. Um, well, thank you, Colin. This sounds yeah. great. And you've, you've stoked my, my desire to start up. I will never. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. Oh, it's so but easy, though. Might- it's I, listen. All you have to listen, like you, all you have to do, is find something you're passionate about, um, and then just sit down and organize your thoughts about it, and then sit down and talk about it for an hour. You, you know, know what I think, Colin? I think CT Pages is my podcast. <laughs> I think that there might you be. Go. What you it know, is. this could you could very easily just take the audio from this and pop it on Spotify or something. We might. We we talked. We talked about this. This was a conversation. So you know, this might not be the end. This might not be the end of us talking, Colin. We may. We okay. may come back to you because I I am a big fan of this idea. Oh, thank you very much. You know, it's just I've been. It's something I've been wanting to do for years now, and this is coming here and COVID nineteen. Like there are good things that have come out of COVID nineteen, and I think our podcast is one of them. 
and it's because it's something I've also wanted to do for a while and I finally got the chance to do it. Awesome. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, I look forward to seeing you again and doing this again sometime in the future. Oh, you will. And it'll be about setting up our podcast. All right. <laughs> <laughs>